All right, so, so far I've been using this GitHub page to test what's happening with this code and how it works, but I can't just keep updating this every single time. That would be a lot of stuff to do. So what I'm gonna do instead from now on to test how everything works, I'm gonna be using this Postman. So you can get it by going to postman.com. I'm gonna go ahead and download and fire this up. So what Postman basically allows you to do is send requests. So similar to how I was running that fetch on my page, now I could just go here and grab the link. And then I can use Postman to basically do requests to that link. So I can do a new one. And here I can do a get request. And if you remember, I was doing get and post. So I was doing get by basically just opening the browser, but I can also do it from here. So I can just do a get request to this link. So if I hit send, that should return that same, see, JSON results. So basically we have status 200 and we have our data, which is basically all the rows from our data at this point. Now I could also do a post request and that would be when I'm trying to add a new record. So let's just do the same URL, only this time we're gonna change it to post. And we also have to have some sort of body for the post. So if you remember when I was doing this, I think I have a sample here someplace. There it is. So now I can take that as the body of this request and it's gonna be raw. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this. Let's just change it up. So if you remember in our spreadsheet, we have first name, last name, phone number, and IDs auto-generated. So if I go ahead and do first name, Olivia, last name, Olive and the phone number. So I'll just keep it like this. Let's just go check what we have in our spreadsheet right now. So you can see Jake is the last person. Let's go ahead and do this post request to that URL with this body. And you can see as soon as I did that, we got Olivia in there as a new record. Now, right now, what we get back from this is basically this script completed, but did not return anything. And that's because we're not really returning anything from our function. So if I go back and take a look to this do post, we grab all of that information. And basically we then, after we append the row, we do nothing. So what we could do, we could return something. So a common thing would be to return the actual array of data or the object back. So let's just try to do return. And for now, let's just take this array of data and then we'll see what we'll do. Now, before I deploy this and check some of these things, I want to go over a couple of other things. Now, the way I did this is that I did this function to compare two arrays and only in cases when all the columns match, it should let me add a row. If it doesn't, it should give me this error response. So why don't we try to do that and see what happens? So right now, if I go back and let's change this instead of the first name, let's remove the first part and we'll do just the last um, phone number. So now if I hit send, see it says status 500, invalid arguments passed. And that's because we basically get this. We should also get this error if we just pass a column name that's not in the list. So for example, if this was first name or something instead of first, 
If I hit send, I should get the same response. And lastly, it should also right now happen if I have an additional column. So if I go here and add another data point, So now we have city in here too. So if I hit send, still get the same thing because column names don't exactly match. So that's pretty much where we are. And if I do remove that and have all the column names matching, then I hit send. It should add another one of those, C124, and basically that person's information. Now this works this way right now, but I think I'm gonna change it. So instead of just making sure that every column needs to match, I'm going to have some required columns. So let's say we want to make sure first and last name is required, but phone, for example, is not required. So you don't necessarily have to pass it. Now I need some way to figure out which columns are required and which ones are not. So I think I'm going to do that in code. So I'm going to go here. So in this do post, we'll have some required columns. So let's just create a variable like that. So what I need to do with my script, instead of having this compare to a race that basically checks if every column is exactly the same, I need to make sure that whatever is passed, well, first of all, that must include these two columns. And the second part is that all the other columns must be one of the columns that's in our spreadsheet. So headers passed is what's being sent as a request. And headers are the actual headers we get from our data. So instead of just checking that they're exactly the same, Let's just change our function and make sure that all of these headers passed are listed within the headers. And we may need to change this name of the function, but let's just scroll down. This is the function. So what we did before, we just compared the length of those two and we returned false if they're not the same length. Now I'm not gonna do that anymore. So I'm also gonna remove most of these. So we need to completely redo this function in a different way. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to actually rename this arguments too. Now, since I'm going to be doing this whole comparison, I may as well just add that third array to this whole mix, which is required columns. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that this array of columns passed is all inside of this one. And at the same time, we need to make sure that all of these columns that are required are in this array with columns passed. I guess we could just do this in a single loop, but I'm just going to do it in two loops to make it more readable. So let's first of all check if all the required parameters are passed. So I'm going to take all the required array of columns and I'm gonna do every method on this. And for each item, basically, in this array, we'll do a callback function. And we need to make sure that that item is within the array of columns passed. If array of column passed includes the item, then this is gonna give us true if it's in the list, then it's gonna go to the next item. So if all of them are true, then this whole thing is true. So this should check if all the required columns were provided. So let's do another one for this one. When we check if all the columns passed are within all the columns list. So that's gonna be very similar to this line. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to copy and paste it. But this time, we need to loop through the columns passed and check within all columns. I think I got that right, hopefully. So now, 
let's see how we're gonna handle this true and false. So we need to return false or we need to return true. So what I'm gonna do, if this is true, then we can keep going. If this is false, we have to stop, right? So what we could do, we could just do the opposite of this. So I'll just do this in an if statement to make this look nice. So I'll just say if that's basically false, then we want to return false. And the same thing I'm gonna do for this. So we don't have to save it in a variable. We'll just say if the negative of this, then return false. And if we didn't return false here or here, then we can return true, like this. And the way we'll be using this, now we need to basically send these three arguments to this. Let's actually rename this too. And that would be this function with it over here. And we need to pass, if you remember, the order was all the columns, columns passed and required columns. So in this case, headers, headers passed. And finally, this required columns. So that I think should take care of this situation. So now we should have this other way of handling this. And the return, it's array of data. Instead, let's just return the JSON body. So we'll take that JSON body, but instead of just returning the body itself, we would like to add the row number that was assigned to that person. So let's just do the ID property on this should be equal to whatever the row number is. And then we can probably just return that JSON body. So that would be a nicer response instead of just returning array over race. So basically if it's successful, we'll just return the object with the new ID. And if it's not, we'll give some sort of hopefully error message. So let's try to just push this and check it and see what happens. So pushed, let's go ahead and check this out. So this is my spreadsheet, let's just scroll down, let's open our postman, and let's just try to send this. And I forgot to deploy this. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Go back to this and send this again. So it still says nothing was returned. I can see it was added. Let me try this. Oh, the script completed, but the return value is not a supported return type. Okay, so that makes sense because I can't just do this. I'm just returning the object. I should be returning the JSON response. All right, so that was a stupid mistake. So that should be this. Let's save this and try this again. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Cool, so it's adding the line and we got the response. See, it gives us the first last name, phone number and the ID that was assigned to this person. If I run it again, it should give us 129 as ID and it should add Olivia one more time. So that part is good. Now the second part we need to try is what happens when we send this with information that doesn't have all the required information, or maybe it has an extra column, so we should be getting errors. Let's try that. Let's just not do the last name. 
So that should fail. So it says illegal request. Oh, you know what? It's supposed to be post, not get. Okay, that's more like it. So invalid arguments passed. I don't think that should be 500, but it doesn't matter. So that's the error number we gave in our back end. Now let's try to change this to have the last name. So now we should have all the required fields first and last. If I scroll down, we should have this. Cool. So if we try to pass a column that doesn't exist, Well, it says syntax error. That's not what I was expecting. Oh yeah, of course. It should be like this. That's more like it. So again, invalid arguments. So now because we have this, now if we have phone number in here, that should have all the arguments, but city should still be invalid. And this shouldn't go through either. But if I remove the city, now we have all of those columns and all the required ones. That goes through and we have our response. Okay, good. Get rid of some of these to keep this nice and clean. So I think that takes care of all the post functionality so that we can basically add records to this table. Because of the way I did this, I should be able to also just go here. All I have to do, just add a column here. Let's just test this really quickly. So let's add that city. So now I should be able to just immediately add that column here too. Or maybe not. So let's see. Syntax error. Why do I keep doing this? Okay, there we go. And there it is. It goes through now because we actually have a city column now and it works. And it also should work if I just do a get request. So if I go back to this and do my regular get request to that URL, it should just return that city column. And for most of these, it's basically blank, but the last one, should have the value. Yeah, so that works. I think in the next video, I will add a couple of other options for this get. So maybe we can pass different arguments to this to only limit to certain number of people instead of just everybody. But for this video, that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.